Okay guys, I'm going to show you how to use this tool effectively. It took me forever to learn how to do it. I kept making bad connections, wasting all my pins, and it took me literally two or three hours to do two connections uh, on each side of two wires because I, I would mess up one and I would make one shorter than the other, then they wouldn't fit in here uniformly. So here's what I came up with to do it consistently every time. I bought these really short pins and they leave about a millimeter in the housing here. They're cheap, but um, I guess it's hard to specify exactly what you want because there's so many names for these DuPont connectors or mini DVs, I don't know. Anyway, um, there's three aspects to this DuPont connector as I'll call it. One is the part that grips the insulation, two is the part that grips the bare copper wire, three is the part that accepts the pin from your breadboard. Now you don't want the insulation to go past this point, you want all copper in this point here. And you do not want the copper coming into the space where the pin will be inserted. Okay, so insulation up to here, then copper wire up to here, and then a clear channel from here to here. So, first off, um, I have, uh, this is called the, what is it, SN28B, and the pin doesn't actually, since it's short, I have the short version of these, I can't actually put the pin in all the way flush on this side, because it will um, it'll crush the part that accepts the pin over here. So what I do is I use these little, I'll call them wings. Oops, I had that backwards. Okay, I'll use these little wings to grip onto, if you look on the jaws, there's a ledge. And the ledge is right in the middle, right here. I'm pointing one of the wings to this ledge right there. It'll hold on to that ledge and it won't go farther down. See, it stops right there. Okay, now what I do is I start on the middle size and I just bend the wings a little. You can do this with your fingernails too if you want. Just a little without the wire, okay? The only reason to do that, um, and if you have a ratcheting mechanism, you, you can release it right here. Okay, it lets you get your pin out again. There it goes. Okay. The only reason to do that is so it'll fit into the next one. Because sometimes those wings, they don't fit into the small uh, 26 to 24 gauge slot. Okay, so just click it, I think, one or two times until it holds it. And notice, oh, here's the big trick. The big trick of everything. This saves lots of time. Put your fingernail, you need a little bit of fingernail, into the part that holds the pin, okay? Now hold it like this so that when you put it into this side of the tool you will not push it in farther than where the pin will be. You don't want the pin getting crushed, the space for the pin to get crushed. Let me adjust my camera here. Okay, that's better. So, putting your fingernail over the part where the pin, the space where the pin goes, will keep you from pushing it in too far. You see how it goes in only halfway and the wings uh, are on the right side there? Okay, so now, once you get it in that far, uh, Make sure you're oriented correctly. I'm not. <laughs> and this is hard to do on camera. It's much easier, but... Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do this without looking through my camera. And show you on the camera. Sometimes you have to start over. Okay. So click it in a little bit, it starts to get tight, 
come over to this side, pull it out so that your space for the pin isn't getting crushed. Also, make sure that it's facing with the wings down. The wings are down. Okay. Have a flat spot here. The wings are right here and here. The wings will get curled up under this little curl here. Okay. And now the other trick, you have to use the right gauge wire. I was using very small wire from those ribbon cables from printers, folding over the wire two times to make it thick enough. And man, that didn't work. But this is, let me see, this is doorbell wire. And this stuff works great. 22 AG, AWG wire. And uh, you want this stripped only as far as this space that's going to grip the wire, the plain wire, okay? So that's like a millimeter, a millimeter and a half. It's really short and it's not intuitive, but that's what you're going to do is only strip a millimeter off. Okay, now this is the trick is it's held in place pretty tightly and since you've already got your wire stripped, sometimes you need to um, squeeze it into a cylinder so the frayed wires don't get stuck in the other one back or the others if you're doing a three connector this is only a dual one that I'm gonna do um, this might be frayed a little but I'll see what happens stick it in and you'll feel it you'll feel the insulation get pushed in farther enough that the insulation will stop the wire from going in more now what you do is look on the bottom, you have to twist your tool around, make sure the wire isn't going into the space where the pin is going to be. Uh, let's see. And let me focus the camera here. Okay. Um, let's see, usually I can see the wires. I can't see it right now. Maybe I'm not pushed in farther enough. Wiggling it around, I still don't see it. I'm definitely in there. Uh, let me pause off camera, it's hard to do on camera. Okay, off camera, I pulled it out and I saw the wires did get frayed a little, so I gotta put them back, maybe that was preventing it from getting pushed in. And you really can't twist them when they're this short. Just kind of, kind of got to, I don't know, squish them. Try to twist them. Okay, I'll try this again. Just going to put it in. Hello, okay, crush it. See if it comes in through the side here. Oh, I'm just making a YouTube video here. You're on camera. Okay. So, do I see the wires coming in? I do not. I can feel it though. I can feel that it stopped. Why can I not see it? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong side. Okay, see the red barely. Okay, I can see. Okay, now you can see the wires pushed in too far. I don't want it in that space with the where the pin housing is. So, and I'm seeing bare wire where I should be seeing it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and crimp it now. When you crimp, make sure it doesn't rotate. Here I go. Okay, it's not rotating. One, two, three. Okay, it releases. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so it grabbed the insulation. Looks good. It might be a little too far into the region where the space for the pin is. So let's try it.
Okay, it does grab the pin. It does grab the pin. Okay. Now one thing is when I'm using these short DuPont connectors, <clears throat> I told you they're about a millimeter too short for these housings. So what happens is this sits up in here a little farther and it doesn't wiggle, but it will push back this far and then that will be it. So before I put this housing on, I want to do the other one and I'll do it on camera. When I do the other one, you got to have them the same length so that they fit the housing um, in the same same distance. <clears throat> and it looks like this wire is this wire, this black one is too long. See here's where the red ends and here's where the black insulation ends. So I need to cut this right here and then leave about this much copper. I'll do that off camera and get back. Okay, I stripped the wire a little more. It's still a little long, but I'm gonna go with it. Now I'm gonna cut right here so it doesn't go into the housing. Okay. And squeeze it. I was working in the garden today, so my fingernails are very manly. <laughs> okay, and so we get a DuPont connector pin, spin them off. Okay, now I'm going to do this one with my fingernails to show you. Just squeeze it a little bit, that'll let it fit into the last slot of the tool. Now, um, put it on here just to see that the copper should not go into the space for the pin. Okay, insulation goes up to the wings and then the part that grabs the copper starts right where the copper is and the copper does not enter this spot right here. So that looks good. So I'm going to take the pin, put it into my tool the same way as before. Now this time I can get to start on the small side because I, I smashed it with my fingernails a little. Okay, so again, you grab the pin by this part with your fingernail to cover up the space where the pin will go. You don't want to put that part into the tool. So now I'm going to flip the tool upside down, put it in so you can see it. This is hard to do on camera, that's why it, okay, it's still a little wide. So here I'll just pinch it a little more. Now I think it'll fit. Now that I'm doing it with the fingernails, you gotta do it symmetrically across the two wings or else it's gonna tilt to the side when you crimp it. So sometimes you can just use the middle one instead, you know, to crimp the wings and then go over to the little one. So now the wings are in. It's, I think it's okay. I need to click it one more time. I'm pulling down this way. Pull out a little bit because the wings grab onto the center ridge. There's a little lip inside. Kind of is handy because it positions this pin in the right spot. I don't know if all pins would would have that property, but again, just use your fingernail. It's kind of clipped in there right there and it's not going to grab because my fingernail is pulling the space where the pin goes farther away from the tool. Okay, so I'm going to click it one more time. Now it's holding. It's holding the pin. And now, here's an important part for when you're doing dual connectors. You see how this is oriented so that we can see the copper facing me? Okay, so when you put the pin in, it's got to be in that same orientation. So you want to put this wire in this way. So the top is the flat part. The top is up here. The wings are down here. Okay, so 
let's get this one out of the way. The flat part is still on top. The flat part is on top up here, not down here. So we're going to put this in. Okay, it just pushes in. And we flip it over and we see the copper. Okay, the copper is in the right spot. I'm just going to crimp it. Crimp it. There it goes. One, two. I think the third click releases the ratchet. Now with the proper size wire, this 22 gauge really makes it easy with this crimping tool. With a smaller gauge, it would rotate in here while I was crimping it down, and man, it took me so many times to get a good connection. Now, when I'm off camera, I can do one of these really quickly, and they're reliable. <clears throat> Let's talk about reliability. Okay, so here's the other end of my wire. Um, if it's the first time you're doing this, definitely you want to check for continuity on the other side to make sure you made a good connection. Or if you're frugal, you will also want to do that because if you mess up and one of the pins isn't contacting, um, you will have to redo possibly both of the pins on this side, even if only one is bad, because then when you cut it, it'll be shorter and it just won't enter the housing correctly. So with my multimeter, I'll check the continuity off camera. Okay, continuity is good. So now, putting them into the housing. Now, this is also kind of a trick. Uh, of course, you want this pieces with the tab that will engage this little connector here. You want these on the same side. I do them one at a time. That way you can hear which one clicks. You can hear them click. Okay, so that one clicked. And I left a little space so that I could actually bend this into the housing. Otherwise you have to do them at the same time. Also a little space lets you see the color of your wire if you're using this doorbell wire. Which is a really great wire for this. It's cheap. Okay, now, see how I'm pushing with my thumb? Don't do that. That could ruin your connection. Just get it as good as you can. Um, now I can tell that it hasn't engaged the little, I don't know what you call it, retaining uh, plastic here. But what I'm going to do is push it uh, a little more. Okay, I think it engaged, but if it doesn't engage, get a really thin jeweler screwdriver and I've been pushing it up a little. And then also what helps is actually push these tabs down. Sometimes they don't go down, the cheap ones. <laughs> okay, now to test, do not pull like this because you can break the connection inside. Instead, take a pin, insert it in one and then the other. Kind of go on the edge, kind of like this, so that if it's not engaged in this retaining clip, it'll just push out really easily. Looks like this one is working. Now I'll go to the other side. And that one is working. Okay. So there you go. Now, just consider how hard it is to use this tool. Also consider that I did this on camera, which is a lot harder to do. So it didn't take me that long. I got a reliable connection the first time. And I used these cheap eBay connectors that are a pain to work with. They're kind of short. I can measure them off camera and tell you what they are. Hold on. Okay, the ticks are sixteenths of an inch. And it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six sixteenths of an inch, not including the manufacturing tape when you break these off there. Six sixteenths of an inch. You'll have to convert that to millimeters, but these are the really cheap ones. I think they were less than a penny each. Uh, but if you, <laughs> you screw them up, and it was taking me like four of them per wire at first, 
um, then you know you quadruple your cost and it just uh, it's not worth getting the cheap ones if you can't use them <laughs> so anyway um, and the time is the main thing I mean it took me literally three hours to do two wires at first but with these tricks hopefully it'll help you thanks a lot bye oh before I go so these were the uh, inner gauge wires I tried to use and I actually bent the copper over four times to get it thick enough to work in these and this wire is just way too thin compare the wire uh, looks like the insulation is actually the same size but the amount of wire in these was just four very small strands probably thinner than human hair and it just did not work in this connector uh, took me forever um, but this this doorbell wire works every time Okay, bye.